Hello, hello. Welcome back to How to Learn a Language. I hope this episode will find you well, which is possibly the most annoying start to an email, isn't it? So therefore, I guess the most annoying start to a podcast. But hey, here we are. We've, we've done it now. <laughs> it's out there in the world. And uh, yeah, welcome. This episode, we will be talking all about the best way to learn a language with successful results. We're going to compare three huge kind of different popular options for how to approach language learning. We're going to look at the pros and cons for each. And um, yeah, we're going to get into that in just a second. But first, I would love to talk to you a little bit about language life, which we'll talk more about later. But I'd love to just let you know that right now is a very, very good time to hop on to the waitlist. You can do this at lindsaydoeslanguages.com forward slash LL because there's lots of really exciting updates that have happened recently that I'm going to share with you. New ways, new options to join and to still take everything in just in a slightly different way. So we're going to be talking about all of that very soon. But for now, if you're curious, and maybe by the end of this episode and we've talked more about these different options, you'll be more curious. Head on over to lindsaydoeslanguages.com forward slash LL. You'll be able to join the waitlist and you'll be first in line to hear all about everything that is going on with those updates. What is the best way to learn a language? Well, there's so, so many ways to learn a language that it can be kind of overwhelming, right? Knowing what you actually need, what's nice to have, and what you can forget and scrap from your plans. We're going to compare three core methods that you might be considering. So we're going to be looking at specifically language-specific courses, free apps, and my program Language Life, and see what the differences are. Maybe, you know, you've probably been wondering, like, what exactly is language life I don't get it how is it different from a language specific course or or just a free app can I just not carry on with that stuff why would I need something like language life and so we're going to look at these three to give you a bit of a cross section across the board right so starting off then first of all with language specific courses now I'm including this as a bit of a broad spectrum right whether it's a teacher-led class a self-study course or a book designed to teach yourself at home, you'll likely be drawn to language-specific courses for obvious reasons. (laughs) You want to learn a language, so you need something that will teach you that language, right? Maybe. We'll talk about the pros and cons. So, pros first of all. There's generally a range of pricing options to suit your budget here. So you can hop on eBay right now or head down to your local charity shop, try your luck at finding a French textbook, right? You might not be able to find a, a Farsi textbook, but you can possibly find a French one a little bit easier. You can book a package of online classes with an Arabic teacher to focus on getting the basics down. You could splurge on that summer Spanish program in Barcelona that you've had your eye on for a while, right? So whatever your budget, there is language specific material out there for you. And this is one of the biggest benefits of language specific courses for many languages. There's so much to choose from that you end up with a range of pricing options to suit your budget. Yay, this is good. This is good. Secondly, it's often quite easy to find reviews. So on tutor marketplace sites, on Amazon blogs, YouTube, it can be really easy to do your research on language specific courses to figure out which one will suit you best. But (laughs) there is a little little kind of um, asterisk I want to give you here, and that is that the Slightly tricky thing here, worth bearing in mind, is that there's this thing called affiliate links that exist. Now, affiliate links inherently aren't bad, but what this means is an affiliate link is a link whereby the website owner of, let's say you found a review for um, a language course that you're curious about, right? The website owner gets a percentage of a sale if you purchase something through their link. So that means that sometimes you might find a review online that cannot praise an online course highly enough. This is because the more people buy through their link, the more affiliate money they make too. So you buy it, you're disappointed, and you think, oh, okay, that's annoying, right? I found a review. (laughs) I thought this was going to be a good thing. And, you know, like I say, affiliate links 
aren't a bad thing. I use them myself for Lindsay Does Languages. I use them both in terms of inviting people to be affiliates for my products, my courses and services, and also to be an affiliate for other people's products, courses, services, whatever it is, right? And referrals, which is essentially what this is, are a really normal and useful thing. Think about the last time that a friend recommended a great restaurant that, in their words, will blow your mind, right? This is just the way business works. But the downside is that affiliate links can lead to bias reviews online. And it's, it's the reason that I stopped doing reviews many, many years ago. Like you start with a language website and all of a sudden you'll be getting emails of like, oh, would you like to review this product? Um, I've made a new app. <laughs> would you like to do it? Or could you review this and you can be an affiliate? And like, if I'm going to review something, for me, that would need to be totally, I have no skin in the game, you know? <laughs> it's like, if you're a music critic, reviewing your daughter's new first album <laughs> like you're thinking oh man the 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 vocals on this are scratchy her guitar is out of tune but it's my daughter how do i how do i say anything it's kind of like that right and you, you maybe you would look at something and think, oh this is a terrible product but they've said i can be an affiliate so does that mean i'm gonna get money if people join them? Oh, and you're in a tricky situation right So that's something to bear in mind. Reviews are easy to find, but just, you know, know that affiliate links exist. The other pro of language-specific courses is that it gives you the content you probably need to learn. So if you've picked the right course for you, which, let's be honest, can be a mission in itself sometimes, then hopefully you'll get lucky and you'll have the content that you probably need to learn right there in front of you. So the vocab, the grammar structures, the scenarios that you're likely to encounter. Hopefully, it's all there in front of you, just waiting for you to take it in. Hopefully. More on this in a moment. The cons, then, of language-specific courses. This is an interesting one, because if you are learning a language like French, Spanish, English, German, one of the big cons can be a complete overwhelm of choice, which can kind of lead to a bit of FOMO, a bit of fear of missing out. Just that sheer range of options that you have with language-specific courses can lead to total overwhelm before you even picked one. And then that FOMO, that fear of missing out when you do pick something and you're sort of wondering, ah, what am I missing by not picking the other one, you know? And how do you know if you've picked the right or wrong resource? You often don't until it's too late when you are chapters in And you're wondering, ah, do I plow through this terrible German course and finish? Or do I just give up now and start with something else? And then when you do think, okay, I've I've overcome the sunk cost fallacy. I'm I'm, going to give in. I'm going to find a shiny new German course instead. It starts from scratch. So yet again, you've got lessons on Guten Tag to get through before you kind of catch up to where you were. And it can it can be a bit exhausting. It's all good. There there are ways that we can counter this overwhelm when it comes to language-specific courses. Firstly, it's really important to set yourself a deadline when picking resources. So do the research on key points that matter to you. So, for example, do you want to speak only or do you need a fuller picture of grammar to pass an exam? And when that deadline comes that you've set for yourself, pick a resource or resources Stick to them and continue to learn how to best use any resource. And remember as well, there's really no such thing as the best language resource, the one, the perfect thing. So don't be sold by kind of gimmicky marketing or reviews online. Just pick something that fits your budget, your time frame of study, your routine. You really can learn a language successfully with any resource when you know how to use it. And interestingly, kind of the opposite problem can can happen um, if you are looking for a language specific course for not French, not Spanish, not English, not Japanese, then it's a bit trickier. So there's another con to consider and that is that resources can be less available for lesser studied languages. So, so far we've talked about what happens when there's too much choice for language specific courses, but that isn't always the case. And what's the best way to learn a language when there's not many resources out there. 
there's often less available. It just, it makes sense. It just doesn't pay for a company to make a course for Guarani or Ainu or Farsi when they know they're going to sell more of German or Arabic or French. And what this means is that learners of lesser studied languages are often left with a sort of outdated mix of photocopied PDF grammar guides, often written for linguists, and website vocab lists from like the early 2000s. And there's nothing wrong with that mix on one condition, and it's the same condition as before, that you know how to learn a language. More on that later. How can we counter this if there's less available for the language that you want to study? Well, much like that previous point, this is all about knowing how to learn a language. When you're confident in that area, you can learn any language with limited resources because you'll know what to do with it. Spend some time kind of getting familiar with the best ways to learn a language for yourself and you'll be ready to learn any language with any resource. My first huge kind of um, encounter of this was when I was learning Guarani, and I knew that there was a Duolingo course. (laughs) It's taught through Spanish. It still exists. It's taught through Spanish. And I thought, oh, well, that's great. That's like a nice, easy, uh, typical first port of call resource for any language, right? That you might think, oh, I want to start learning language X. I'll check on Duolingo. I'll check on these apps and see if there's something there, right? And there was. So I thought, brilliant, that's great. That's, that's, that's fine. That was fine. But then I also wanted something kind of booky, like a book-based course. I work really well with like teach yourself books, for example, for me personally. And There wasn't that, (laughs) like it just didn't exist. All that I could buy from the UK was, I think on Amazon at the time, one dictionary. And I don't even know if it was Guarani to English, I think that was still Guarani to Spanish. And so hmm, I was like, okay, what do I have? Well, I have this Duolingo course, I have, um, there were PDFs, some, some old Peace Corps lessons, live lingua is a good, place to check if you're learning a lesser studied language with less resources and so I had these bits that I pieced together but I was having to piece them together I was having to know my best ways to learn know what I needed and then what how to use which resource best for me and so that in itself is a really important skill to develop whether it's you're learning a lesser studied language with less resources or you're going through that overwhelm and you think I want to learn Japanese and then there's a million and one courses to choose from. Knowing your best ways of learning are going to help you in both of those scenarios. And our final con of language specific courses is that content isn't always relatable. Now I said that a pro of language specific courses can be that the content you want and need is right there for you. However, this isn't always what happens. Sometimes you end up with dialogues about Mr. Smith going to Spain for a business trip or Miss Jones heading to Indonesia on a student visa, which is fine if that's your reason for learning. And in that case, you found your best way to learn a language. Yay, this is good news. But for the rest of us, that sort of content can feel stale and boring, right? And when language learning gets stale and boring, that's when it's far too easy to lose motivation and give up. How can we counter this? There's two stages to this process. Firstly, it begins with de-centering yourself from the resource that you're using. You may not be Mr. Smith going to Spain on a business trip, but someone is, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that this resource isn't for you. It doesn't mean that it's a complete write-off from the beginning, because the next step is to re-center yourself. So ask yourself what you'd like to see differently in that resource instead. How would you alter that dialogue in chapter three for your own more likely scenario? So there we have it, our pros and cons of language specific courses. Lots of food for thought there. And I wanna make sure that with each of these options we have um, some suggestions, some ways to get started. There are though, (laughs) like so many language specific options out there. It would be impossible for me to list them all here. So I'll list the ones I know, the ones I'm an affiliate for. See, I said it's not always a bad thing and the ones I've tried myself. All the links are in the blog article accompanying this episode. So Jimglish make great language specific courses for French, English, Spanish, German, and Italian. I've written some more about their courses and also some really useful advice about how to pick your next online language course as well. In fact, I say I've written it. 
I believe that was the first episode of this podcast. So yay, there we go. So scroll back in the feed and you'll find that too. Uh, language pod 101 sometimes called class 101 from innovative language this series offers a really good range of languages i use this a lot when i was learning japanese but they have are you ready oh deep breath afrikaans arabic bulgarian cantonese chinese as in mandarin czech danish dutch english filipino fin- finnish french german greek hebrew hindi hungarian indonesian italian Japanese, Korean, Norwegian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Swahili, Swedish, Thai, Turkish, Urdu, and Vietnamese. Whew, okay, that's a list. Um, if you're learning Portuguese, Mia Esmeriz has a great range of options for various levels. If Spanish is your language, and if you love music especially, then definitely check out Learning Learn Spanish con Salsa. And like I say, beyond that, have a good look around Pick what feels like the right fit for you if this is something that you're interested in. Okay, then our next way to learn a language is with free language apps and maybe paid for ones too. It is so great that language learning has become accessible to so many more people through apps. And honestly, in the wider scope of that through the internet and through social media and all of these things, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And The cool thing though about apps specifically is that often with apps, language learning is made more fun or at least seemingly more fun. (laughs) Depends on, depends on your opinion. However, there are two sides to consider this when it comes to establishing the best way to learn a language. So we'll talk about the pros first. So the pros of free language apps then. You have free or often low priced options that make it easy to start. If we're comparing this to a language specific course that decision normally involves paying something right which can feel like oh am I going to use this is this something I'm going to be committed to and sometimes that can be a good thing sometimes that can be like yes I'm putting money on the table that is me committing but sometimes you just want to dip your toe in the water and apps give us a chance to do that we've probably all heard of in fact i've mentioned it already i'm sure (laughs) in this episode duolingo it's fun it's cute it's easy it's quick and best of all it's free unless you want to upgrade to super duolingo or duolingo max but this any language app the fact that we have free or low priced options make it super easy to get started learning a language due to that lack of a financial barrier and even if you do decide to go for a paid a paid for version of an app chances are it's going to be relatively low priced perhaps compared to language specific courses and that means that you can then spend your language budget on other things so you know big win this is good secondly the big advantage here the big pro it's easy to fit into your busy day so let me guess you are listening to this now on your phone or your phone is within your vicinity If you love it or hate it, our phones are a part of modern life. And this means that language apps are really easy to fit into our day because they're just there. (laughs) They are just there, which makes them a great contender for one of the best ways to learn a language. Also, it feels really rewarding. That ease of use and that speed of going through a lesson can feel really rewarding. Those little dopamine hits we get when the green Duolingo owl tells us that we did good or those drops, little motivation notes pop up. That stuff works. And when we feel like we're succeeding, we want to do more. And these apps, believe me, they put a lot of time, money and research into finding out exactly what makes us feel like we're succeeding. Whether it's rewards, virtual coins, a unicorn flying across the screen on a rainbow, all of these things can contribute to us feeling like it's time well spent and therefore we want to use the app more. So this is good. However, some downsides and it's very similar really to um, language specific stuff. So that overwhelm of choice can lead to FOMO. So it has to be said, much like language specific courses, there are a lot of free language apps out there nowadays. Should you use Memrise or Close Master? Is it worth paying for Link or Lyrics training? Is Monly better than Basu? Is Babbel worse than Rosetta Stone? It is a lot. And sifting through your options can again lead to total overwhelm and FOMO when it comes to picking the best ways to learn a language. And once you've picked one, For some of us, we get that feeling of the need for completion, that feeling to have it complete and perfect, 
And this means it's easy to spend too much time with an app that isn't perhaps working the most productively for us. But how can we counter this? So, and same, you know, with the with the um, the con being here in the first place, this is quite similar to language specific courses. Set yourself a research deadline. I actually do this every few months when it comes to apps because there's so many of them <laughs> just like appearing and disappearing. And it's a really fun activity, honestly, that allows for a little play and exploration to just kind of chill for half an hour, download a batch of apps and then just sit and see, hmm, what do I think? And the more I test and experiment with different apps, the more I know which features work best for me. It's a really non-committal sort of half an hour or so every couple of months. So definitely worth doing that to set aside some language app playtime for yourself. The other potential downside of free language apps is that the content isn't always relatable or it doesn't always give you the full picture. So we've all seen the memes, right? The sort of people who learn a language on Duolingo, TikToks and YouTube videos. Now, although I'm actually quite a fan of the sometimes seemingly unuseful sentences, when they're used right, they're so good. But I do get why they're jarring to some people. And it has to be said that the content that apps teach isn't always relatable unless you often need to tell people how your snake eats their cakes, for example. And... If it's not sentences like snakes eating cakes, then many apps focus solely on single out of context words, which is a great help if you actually know what to do with those words in a sentence, something that isn't always so readily taught on language apps. But there's a way that we can we can counter this, right? Recognize a language app for what it is. It is a tool to help you. It is not your one and only resource. When you encounter a strange sentence or a weird word, ask yourself how you could use that grammar in a more useful for you way. So when the sentence is like, my snake eats the cake, maybe, (laughs) you know, you don't own or you don't want to own a snake, try changing it to something like, my sister eats the cake. And you can then take this further too and see if you know how to change that sentence into a question or into a negative sentence, putting it into different tenses, wherever you're at with your level, experiment with all of that. So my sister eats your cake. Does my sister eat your cake? My sister does not eat your cake. My sister ate your cake, etc., etc. And when you get creative with it, you'll soon be really grateful for those weird and wonderful sentences because they can be a real... Um, prompt to lead you into a good practice so yeah there's there's ways when we recognize that an app is a tool and not our one and only resource there's a lot of useful things that we can get from it and finally here it can honestly be a little bit disappointing or maybe a lot disappointing when the results don't show so for all those dopamine hits that you're getting whilst learning It can be really disappointing when your 782 day Duolingo streak for Vietnamese leads to absolutely nothing coming out of your mouth when your plane lands in Hanoi. And much like language specific resources, sometimes giving us unrelatable content, this can lead to a total flop in motivation for learners. And I've spoken to no end of people over the years who tell me how they've been using language apps for years, but it gets really tricky when they actually encounter speakers of that language. And that often leads to them dropping language learning altogether, which isn't what we want. And to be fair, I'm not sure it's what the language apps want either. So how do we counter this disappointment, this potential for soul crushing (laughs) drops in motivation? Well, as I've said, a language app is a tool. And like with any tool, the results about how you use it. You could use a knife. Let's take a knife as an example. You could use a knife to cut a slice of delicious cake for your snake. Or you could use it to murder a poor innocent snake, curiously slithering over to you to say hello. The knife is just the tool. It's how you use the tool that changed your opinion of it. So focus some time and effort on learning how to learn a language and you'll begin to notice that your time spent with language apps becomes better used and more productive. So it's a win-win. Yay! How do we get started then with apps? Honestly, head to your app store on your phone or your Google Play Store, whatever it's called, type in the language that you're learning, type in language learning and see what comes up. Have a little look, get started. 
if you haven't already, I think, <laughs> like most of us probably have, um, at least tried one or two or three or 17 apps. Um, but if you haven't, that's the way to get started. I've also compiled a huge list of language learning resources um, and there is a link in the blog article to sign up for that and I'll put it in the description as well. And so finally, Language Life. Language Life is a program that I run for learners of all languages. It's that combination of self-study curriculum, human support and feedback, and regular practice opportunities that you've been waiting for and probably craving. And the difference is that I don't teach you a language. Instead, I teach you how to learn a language. So what we learn together in Language Life actually better helps you to use any tool, whether it's a language specific course or a free app or something else, and figure out the best way to learn a language for you. So we'll consider the pros and cons of this approach as well. So the pros then are that this really allows space to personalize your own best way to learn a language. We've discussed a bit about how sometimes the content on language specific courses or apps can feel a bit restrictive, right? You're kind of led through chapters one, two, three, and four, and by the end, you maybe know how to say some stuff in the language, but maybe not everything that you wanted or needed. And it's the same with learning how to learn a language. There is no one method or system, copyright, trademark, <laughs> you know, that is the one way to learn how to learn a language, right? So much of the process is about the individual learner, about you. And in Language Life, I've made space for that personalization to happen. So when you do the workbook activities, when we discuss your specific questions, either one-on-one -on -one or with our private podcast feed for questions, ooh, when you get to practice language regularly on your own terms, all of the stuff, all of the ways that Language Life has been shaped as a program to teach you how to learn a language is not one prescriptive method, right? It's all about you at the core of everything. Secondly, as you can probably guess, because I've mentioned it already, it teaches you how to learn a language so that you can do it for life. And after years of working in the language learning industry, I came to realize what was missing. And there are lots of language specific courses, apps, and just so much more out there for French learners, for Spanish beginners, for Japanese exam takers. There's so much good stuff. But what there's a lot less of is how to actually learn a language in the first place. It's kind of like step zero, step one. <laughs> and we've often missed that bit out. So I made language life to fill that need because the biggest joy of language life is that once you've learned how to learn a language, you can do it for life. It's like that old fish proverb, right? You give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And that is the core principle of language life. That's why it's called language life, right? Because you gain skills for life to learn languages. Another huge pro of language life is that it is designed to fit with your language learning at the same time. I know that it might feel like it's too late to start to learn how to learn a language. That feeling of, oh, I'm on chapter 12 already. I'll finish this course book and then I'll think more about how to learn a language. And I get it. It can feel like you're being asked to add another thing to your language to-do list. But here's the difference compared to adding another app or language specific course to that pile. Learning how to learn a language alongside actually learning is the best way to do both of those things. So think about it. We'll compare this to learning how to drive. Learning how to learn first, so joining language life without learning languages at the same time, would be like learning to drive without getting into the car, right? You may be looking at a picture and you're like, yeah, I see how it all works, but you're not in it, you're not doing the thing. And learning the language first on its own would be like jumping in a car without knowing where the brake is and kind of crossing your fingers that you don't hit a pedestrian. But when you do both at the same time, it's like actual driving lessons with me in the passenger seat guiding you. I should add, side note, not actually a driving instructor. I cannot help you in that endeavor, <laughs> but I can help you with learning how to learn a language. All right then, the cons, because there are a couple of downsides and I totally understand that firstly, that initial cost of language life may seem intimidating. 
the cost of language life compared to a language specific course or an app individually may initially seem intimidating. I understand that default comparison, but there really is no comparison. Language life is quite unique. And as we've discuss- discussed um, in this episode, it's very different to both language specific courses and apps. It's not a replacement for those things, but it's something that gives you a different approach to those things, a better approach to those things. And that means that you no longer need to spend lots of money on monthly app subscriptions and courses that you don't use because you want to learn how to make the most of what you already have in front of you. And you'll learn that through self-study curriculum, human support and regular practice, all with that space to personalise it for you. And as I mentioned already, what you do in language life, it's you are gaining skills that last a lifetime, skills that you can apply again and again and again to learn as many languages as you want, and even skills that are often applicable to other areas of your life too. So if you're thinking, oh, that cost seems intimidating, let's counter this. Let's just think about this in a different way. Consider that lasting impact of language life, because it is way more than just the time we spent together. And If you're trying to add up what you'd pay for individual elements of language life or for the number of videos, that's not the point. Remember that you're gaining invaluable skills for life here. This is a lasting long-term impact from the work that we do together in language life. And it's also worth noting here that we do offer a payment plan to help spread that cost across your time in the program too. Okay, the other potential downside of language life is that it requires you to think about language learning in a new way. And this isn't always easy, right? It really isn't always easy to approach something that you've maybe done for a long time in your life. To approach that with a fresh vision can be difficult. But if you're not ready to think about language learning in a new way, then language life probably isn't for you. Because it does require you to do some deep, personal, inquisitive work and think about language learning in a new way. And people truly get the best results from language life when they're open to experimenting with their learning. So if you're thinking, I'm feeling blocked here, how can you counter this? Well, it's worth asking yourself why you think you're feeling blocked. Do you think that you've already got the best way to learn a language down and solid for yourself? Are you hesitant to change because the last language specific course that you tried was a total waste of time or money? I totally get it. I've had disappointments too. And, and, you know, this is why when you join Language Life, I want you to be sure. So there is a 14 day money back guarantee to make sure that you know you've made the right decision for yourself. Right. So there's essentially zero risk. (laughs) So how do you get started? As I mentioned at the beginning, Language Life has recently been revamped for 2023. We've got some really exciting new updates and new options for joining. I'm going to be sharing this with you very, very soon. So if you want to be first in the know, join the waitlist. I will link in the description. It's on the blog article as well. And if you are listening on the go, lindsaydoeslanguages.com forward slash LL and that will take you to where you need to be so you'll be first in line to know everything about when this happens so uh yeah there we go I'm so excited there's honestly like just so much good stuff that is happening that I've got planned for language life and I'd love you to be a part of it so get on that wait list lindsaydoeslanguages.com forward slash ll and we'll be talking all about that very very soon but for now have a wonderful rest of your day I will be back very very soon and yeah I'm looking forward to telling you more about language life Ah! if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening right now and if you have a little extra minute a a review, a rating, all of that stuff is very much appreciated and it helps new people to find the show. So thank you for taking a moment to do that. Much, much appreciated. And as always, any questions, anything I can help with, email lindsay at doeslanguages.com and I'll be more than happy to get back to you as soon as I can. But yeah, the big news is join the waitlist, lindsaydoeslanguages.com forward slash LL. That is the place to be so you are fully in the loop and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.